It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, is the DJ Roundtable show. Yet we have another great fun one today. And as always, we got some great DJs here. A uh, few not here, you know, working and so forth, so on. As always, and it's great to see you here. Uh, we have a new DJ here, Donovan, all the way from the Pennsylvania area and the East Coast there. So we have a couple East Coast people here including Sean returning again, was Wisconsin, now he's Georgia. We got Brentley from Wisconsin, myself here in Chicagoland area, Jeff in uh, North Carolina, and a uh, cool thing in South Carolina. And uh, hopefully a few more, we'll see what comes in. It's like anything else, uh, every here is doing this for fun, enjoying themselves. And I hope you're having some fun too. If you are here watching, thank you for coming in tonight. And I hope you enjoy this show. If you are new to the channel, please hit subscribe and follow the channel. And also, this will be replayed on YouTube. Um, I have a YouTube channel, and we go YouTube on Mondays at 12 noon. So you'll be able to watch this over again and catch this. And we kind of do it as like a podcast format. I don't try to share pictures or anything on here, but we do talk about everything. We are very gear heavy. So if you like talking about gear, you like uh, hearing about DJ gear and how to, so how each DJ does things, that's what we do. We don't try to say it, we know everything. We just say, this is how we do it and how we overcome obstacles and problems. And hopefully may help you solve a problem or two as well. So again, thank you for coming in. And if you're watching this on YouTube on the replay, do me a favor, help me smash that monster called the YouTube algorithm. It likes to hold us down, and if you can help me in any way possible, please make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you hit the follow button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button or follow button, whichever you want to look at. And also hit that bell icon so that way you know what's coming on. Again, we try... I We... For a show, try to be on there every Monday at noon. I put other things up on the YouTube channel, including some unboxings and some gig logs. I just put a video up for this past weekend's wedding uh, with ceremony and some dancing. So hopefully you watch that and have some fun. Uh, we got Taylor in here. Hopefully Jordan is not far from her. Uh, and as well. Uh, so with everything, let's start with the show. First thing first, Donovan, welcome to the DJ Roundtable. We're glad to have you here, sir. I know you're on a remote location there, DJing off the uh, decks on a 18-wheeler uh, somewhere in the East Coast area. Uh, and we yeah, appreciate I'm in Virginia. There you yeah. go. And I appreciate you coming here on your on a work night. And again, hopefully you're safe and enjoying yourself and not working too hard. But uh, if you want to tell everyone about your DJ service and about what you do, <clears throat> Be greatly appreciate, well, sir. I started in 1985, and I was a full-time uh, DJ and entertainer for 33 years. I still consider myself a full-time DJ entertainer. I just happened to learn to drive a truck three years ago, um, basically for giggles. Um, so I do drive a truck Sunday from 1 o'clock until Friday at 1 o'clock, and then Friday night and Saturday nights I still DJ. So coming up in May, I'll be... It'll be my 40th anniversary of DJing full time. Um, but I play weddings, uh, high schools, proms, uh, private parties, you know, some bars here and there. I do karaoke at a bar close to me and have a great time with it. And also, uh, I know you were at DJX just a few weeks ago. And um, I want to ask you, since we had uh, Matt was here, Matt went to D DJX. Um, how was your experience at DJX? Did you enjoy it? Did you have fun out there? Well, I've gone to DJX every year except for one. My sister got married in Germany, so I couldn't make it one year. Um, so I've been going through 33 out of the 34 years. Um, I, I love DJX. I like to see all my friends from across the nation. I do sit in on seminars. Um, there's always something in a seminar, like Chris Diamacchio, I think his name is. He said he's a DJ from the 1900s. So I'm using that. You know, I'm I'm a DJ from the 1900s. Um, you know, it, it just the seminars are great. You know, the camaraderie, meeting all your friends from across the nation um, once a year. It, it's really 
it's something that I will always do. I, I will always take a week off to go to Atlantic City. Um, it, it was a great experience again. Yep. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And, you know, it's one of the things when you go to seminars, like here in Chicago, um, or actually it was in Rosemont, but the Chicago area, we have Marquee. Uh, you know, you have out in the West Coast, uh, you have actually the one in Vegas, uh, Max, and then you have also, uh, but that's not so much for DJs. That's for every music, every everything, NAM. That's like to showcase. That's more for the retailer versus DJX. It's more for the DJs. And I also want to do a shout out to the Dish Jockey News uh, TV guys. I know they were there. They were having some fun. They had a chill room. Uh, one of these days, I got to get out there because I know a lot of them. And I, I'm friends with a lot of them. And I uh, got to show them some love. And I'm hoping to maybe have a few of them come on here, too, and uh, share some wisdom on our show as well. Um, so with that said, again, Donovan, I appreciate. Thank you so much. I'm glad to have you here. I watch you on social media. And again, look for you have some great humor, uh, some great insight. And also because you have the uh, background of being a multi-op, a large multi-op, uh, you have that understanding. DJ Brentley has been part of a multi-op. He understands that area. I'm kind of a quasi-multi-op because I have a couple employees, but I'm not in the same level as what you were on, Donovan, and I'm not uh, what Brentley had with his business uh, before. So, And then uh, Taylor and Jordan, they also have a multi-op because they do uh, DJing and they also do some decor. Uh, and they have a, a, they have some staff, they have employees, and they do a bunch of stuff. They have a bunch of irons in the fire too. So, but now I have cool thing, which is Hunter. He um, he is also uh, a single employee, and I have Jeff who's single. Uh, Sean, uh, Sean, you have you have an assistant, or you're just yourself? Uh, so it's me, the wife, and then we got a couple of people who help us for bigger gigs with photo booths, special effects, lighting. Yeah, and that, again, that's kind of a quasi multi op. You're like you're like me. Yeah. You know, you got I, you know, like this Sunday wedding I have, we have a couple, or two of our employees help us because it's multiple setups. It's the property is like around ten acres. the The ceremony is like an acre and a half away. There's no golf cart, so they got to drag a cart through. And I'm not going to do that with my bad knee. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I, I can't do that. But that's why I have employees. That's why you have trained people. I know. Uh, we have some really great people and a lot of great insight. And again, if you're new to the show, thank you for coming in here. The uh, the thing I want to start off with the first round for your first question, which I always love asking questions from everyone uh, and get great insight. And that's one of the things I try to do. It's always pick a topic that everyone can talk about. And this came up my feed a while ago. Um, and then it came back up basically yesterday. And in my feed, it was talking about, and I don't know if you guys remember or not, a photographer that was at a event, at a wedding, took pictures. Uh, they did not feed, I don't know if it was a him or her, um, dinner. And the title was, and they deleted the, the pictures that they took because they weren't uh, fed. And there's more information than that out there, you know, so you have to go back, go Google it, go read it. There's much more to the story. I'm giving a very, very small synopsis uh, and very just the, the shocking headline. So it, that's the headline that, you know, I had come up and I was like looking and there's there's tons of news stories on YouTube and so forth. So please go go watch it and, you know, be, make sure you understand everything on that to say, oh, my God, that's our worst thing ever. There's more to it than that. But I wanted to ask everyone, have you had to, as a DJ, um, deal with a customer that, you're either is not um, doing what they're supposed to do by, by paying you or um, being disrespectful to you. And again, we wouldn't want to be professionals, but how do you handle someone, be it a, a bride that's, you know, freaking out, having her a, a heart attack, you know, that day over everything or a, a groomzilla or, you know, a, a overbearing mother or overbearing father, or overbearing friend. It could be someone <laughs> in the wedding party. How do you handle um, how do you handle that? How do you handle those people coming in and like, you know, trying to, uh, try and be rough shop? Uh, I'm going to start with Donovan on that one. Donovan, uh, how do you handle that, uh, mm -hmm. that friendly well, person coming in and tell you basically, uh, kind of being bullied? I had a wedding on March 18th and the bride said that the mother wanted to talk to me and I'm like, okay, that's odd. So I, I called the mother and the mother was very specific about things and um 
you know, I could tell there was stress between the, the bride and, and her mother. Um, so w from the bride, I found out what kind of drink she normally drinks. It's some kind of bourbon with something else. I forget the exact title of the drink. But I brought that to the reception, to the actual day. You know, I brought it before the ceremony, and I had it there for the bride's mother. Um, you know, when I walked in, I just was authoritative, and this is what we're doing, you know, according to what the bride wants. And, and the bride's mother really, you know, she, she loosened up as time went on, but there was definitely a stress before the day even began. Um, you know, that, that wedding was fabulous. It was probably one of the best weddings I've ever done, you know, as far as me mixing and really, you know, feeling like I was owning the dance floor. Um, but, you know, I, I think when I have those kind of circumstances where there's, there's a difficult bride or something that's, that's strange, um, I think I excel in that um, because I go out of my way to try to figure out what I can do to make it best. Um, I always tell my brides and grooms, you're getting married. No matter what happens on your wedding day, you're there to get married. Um, that's the underlying thing that you're doing. It's not to, you know, have a party that you'll remember forever. It's the fact that you're getting married. Um, so I've had some doozies in 40 years. I, I bet. And, you know, one of the things, you know, I, I chuck a lot of it up to nerves and people want the best for whoever it is. Uh, and you want the best for either themselves being a couple or be it a parent or a friend or whatever. They want the best for the couple. And a lot of times you got to overlook that and say, OK, this is this this is a hard one. But, yeah, I, I, having someone who is, you know, liberated before stuff starts. We've had that. Uh, we've had uh, a groom <laughs> drunk. We had a bride drunk before the wedding started. So it, it's 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 always interesting how you handle. It. And Tracy, uh, my wife, who uh, does the coordination time management, she uh, handled both of them. Uh, basically, she was mom part two because the moms were busy doing their mom stuff for the wedding, and Tracy got a chance to step in there. So that helped out quite a bit having the extra person there. Uh, but I want to go to. Uh, Taylor and Jordan, um, with the two of you, when you run into a difficult, again, fill in the blank, it could be a bride, it could be a groom, it could be mother, father, brother, sister, whatever, aunt, she wants to talk in the microphone because she wants, she's the aunt or whatever it is. How do you handle that? Um, I don't know if I've brought this one up before. Um, it actually happened this season. I went to give the mic or kind of talk to um, the maid of honor, like at the beginning of dinner, and she was not prepared to be on a mic, to say the least. Um, being super difficult, like wouldn't even, at, she wouldn't drop it that she was giving the speech right now, but it was planned for after dinner. I kind of just was, you know, prepping her. But she just didn't understand it. She kept disappearing. And then when it came to time to give her speech, she kept disappearing. So I kind of just went to the bride and, you know, told her what was going on. And she already kind of knew about it and was like, I don't want her to give a speech. But then here comes bride's brothers and kids convincing her because they think it's going to be funny. You know, so they got their cameras out waiting for this drunk speech. So we... I kind of went the avoid it route with the bride. Like she was kind of like, yeah, just let's see if we can drop it and she'll forget about it. And then, but then, you know, the brothers and all them would then bring it back up. So eventually she did give her speech. It wasn't as bad as everyone thought it was going to be, but I think we stalled it long enough. Maybe she, cause uh, like when the coordinator asked uh, if she was giving a speech, I looked at the coordinator. And I said, she needs some bread. Um, and I think we, we, everyone was trying to stall it. No one wanted to touch the subject because it was the bride's best friend. She ends up giving a speech. They both end up crying and hugging on the dance floor. It was fine. It wasn't a very good speech, but, um, it just, it, it was a little hard to handle at the given moment of everything going on. Um, I think it distract it from a lot of like the first dances and stuff going on and kind of almost made those mess up just from like this woman like hanging on me and being drunk and um yeah I really didn't know what to do in this situation I kind of get overwhelmed and anxious in those situations especially when a drunk person is hanging on me 
Um, and yeah, I just kind of went to the bride and, you know, kind of was like, she might be too drunk. And she was, you know, I was almost afraid to do that though, too, because like going up to the bride and telling her her bridesmaids is too drunk. Is she going to agree with me or get offended? And <laughs> thankfully she agreed, but And that, that's, that's the important stuff. Now, when you're, when you're doing something like that, do you ask your lovely wife next to you for a tag team and maybe tag her in and have her talk to her or. I wasn't there that night. This <laughs> oh, see, there's a problem right there. The boss wasn't there. If Taylor was there, because Taylor would have been able to just completely take over DJing because in, in those moments, Taylor would have been doing the DJing while I'm doing the speeches and the dances and all that kind of stuff. So at this particular gig, I had an assistant, but that assistant isn't prepared enough to handle that. Like he can press, you know, the cue buttons or do a couple, you know, things with equipment that I ask him to, but he isn't prepared to completely take over where I'm still have the role of both MC and DJ at that given moment. So if Taylor was there, it probably would have went a lot better because I would have been able to focus on the, the, uh, crap show, if you will. Um, and then she could focus on the DJ where I would have, I kind of, and that's, that's the thing when, you know, life gives you lemons, you make lemonade and you try to make lemonade out of what you got. And I, it sounds like you made a successful thing and you made, wasn't the best lemonade. Maybe it had a little sourness to it, but you add enough sugar to anything. Sometimes you can, uh, you can make a, you know, you can make something good out of it. And that's the important thing. I'm going to go over to cool thing uh, and ask him, uh, have you dealt with, you know, someone who is, you know, nervous or scared or just, you know, they're asking, hey, when, when we're going to do this, when we're going to do this, when we're going to do this. So they're a, they're bothering you, be a bride, be a friend, be it as someone you did at a birthday party, the birthday person, be it a guest there. You know, when you have an overbearing person or someone who's nervous going to do something, what, what do you do usually when you run into something like that? Well, I've never really experienced anything like that. I always like all my gigs go smoothly and they all work out the way we all want it to. And it just, I never really dealt with that. So you, you don't, you yeah. don't have, you don't have, you don't have anything. Nope. And I'm, when I DJ for family and friends, I always have family and friends who look out for me and making sure I'm all right. Well, yeah, it's family. They look at you a little differently. Yeah. Yeah, that I have plenty of drinks and food. Even with friends, they always look out for me to see if I'm taken care of. Like, they always ask me if I want anything to eat or drink or anything like that. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. And, <laughs> yep, and that's that's the important thing is to make sure people are people are taking care of you, especially friends or family. But um, I, I want to get to the chat a little bit here. Um, I'm going to say E-G, e, oh, sorry, E.G. Maggie K.? Uh, I think that's your name. If I'm saying it wrong, please tell me in the chat. Um, yes, that is the one where it's a friend, an acquaintance of the couple. And yeah, they didn't feed them and he, they deleted the pictures. And uh, yeah, they gave a heavy, heavy discount for that one. Yes, that is the one I'm talking about. But again, just came in my feed and it's like, ah, yeah, I forgot about this one. This is a, this is a good one to ask the uh, the group what they do uh, with someone who is you know causing... Problems with them now again. I wouldn't. I would say it's kind of unprofessional, not uh, you know deleting pictures. Even though you have a discount and stuff like that, I would just give them the raw pictures and not edit anything. Just say here, here's the pictures, and you know, then ha they come and ask, "Hey, I'm going to charge you because it's going to take my time." But that's that's me just because the fact that you know, again, I I wouldn't delete there and ruin their wedding, but. Again, I, I understand it, but I wouldn't do it. Uh, and uh, Kevin, I see you over there. Drunk mother makes it easy. New question for their wedding planner. And then favorite drink for all involved. Yes, that, those are some of the good things to ask for. What is your favorite drink? That is uh, something, that's a Donovan thing right there. And Donovan brought that up saying, hey, we can get you get you some uh, liquid courage, you can say, or liquid calm down, or whatever you want to call it. And I will tell you this uh, past weekend, I want to see a show of hands if you happen to you. Someone who is trying to, or supposedly supposed to make a speech, if I could talk right, uh, uh, it's too hot here in Chicago. It's a, it's a hot day today. Uh, someone is supposed to do a speech. So you have, you know, maid of honor, brother, groom, whoever. 
And they back out the last minute and say, no, I, I can't speak. I can't do it. I can't do it. And they have a few drinks to get some liquid courage. And they have speeches a little bit later. And not bad speech, not like they're slurring their words and they're having a hard time you know, understanding them or anything crazy. But when you run into a situation like that, and you, you I'm, I'm sure we all have, um, it's one of the things that you try to do it. Do you try and do it as quickly as they come to you, or do you try to do it, you know, later on and, and maybe right before dancing starts or something like that? So I want to see a show of hands. Who would move it, do it right there? They come up to you, hey, I'm good to go, do the speech right there and then, or wait a little bit later on, get closer to dances. So who would do that right away for them at selling you that they're ready to go after a couple of drinks or, okay, so two right away, I'm, I'm right away. And then the rest of you guys would do it a little bit later on, Dan? <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I never really dealt with speeches at any of my weddings. No? No, we just do ceremony, we do cocktail, dinner, and then we are ready to party. Well, yeah, before match. Yeah. Speech, speeches are always a fun part, because sometimes, uh, as Tracy always tells the people who are doing speeches, just remember, you're you're between them and food, so you don't want to make it too crazy or too long. So, and keep it classy for the couple. Never throw a couple under the bus. Never never say anything bad. Keep it classy and keep it short because you have a bunch of hangry people waiting for their steak or chicken or wherever they're eating. So, with that said, uh, let's go on to our next one, Jeff. Have you you know when you have a difficult person, be it whoever it is, bride, groom, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, mother, father go on to her list how do you handle them how do you handle that you know person come up to you and demanding or asking or telling you no i'm not going to do this or do that how do you handle that and those that kind of a problem person well you just got to play it by ear i mean it depends if they're close to the couple or close to the event or whatever you know you work with them do the best you can you know because uh you don't want to tick off anybody that is you know, it may be paying the bill or know someone who's paying the bill. Uh, so, you know, you got to play it, uh, play it pretty, pretty carefully. Um, for me, you know, one of the worst experiences I've had was from a wedding planner, uh, a coordinator who was just nervous. And I think she was young and had not done very many weddings and she was freaking out, you know, because things were running behind. And I'm like, don't worry about it. They, it Every wedding runs behind, you know, I've never been to a wedding that has, has been exactly minute on time. I'm like, it's no big deal. As long as the couple's happy and she was freaking out. She was like, no, no, this is going to blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and she started demanding that I move things along, but I could see out of my two eyes that the couple was having just fun. They were just, they, they were, there was nothing wrong with being 10, 15 minutes behind because the schedule was, it was flexible. You know, we could shorten it up, uh, you know, one of the uh, later things in the evening or whatever, but the event planner was, you know, just kind of going crazy. And so for me, I just ignored her, you know, to some degree. I just, you know, she said, let's move this, let's, let's do this now. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, I just took my sweet time, you know, and, and when it felt right, you know, to the couple and, and, and at the end of the night, you know, she did come to me and, and, and she said, look, Hey, I know I've been crazy all night. Thanks for being a professional, blah, blah, blah. And I, I was just said, hey, no problem. You know, it's uh, you know, it's as long as the couple's happy, everybody's happy, everybody's good. So um, you just, it's got to be, you know, for me at least, you've got to just get along with everybody and smile and just keep moving on and um, and not worrying about things. So the more you worry uh, in, in this line of work, the worse things will get in a hurry. Yeah, and that, that's very true, especially someone who's new to the position, someone's new to the industry. It, it, it's 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 their first one or they don't even have a few in. They something's going awry, and a lot of people don't understand that weddings are never on time. And I saw uh, Jordan and Taylor laughing and smiling. Uh, do you have something to add to uh, Jeff's uh, Jeff's story? No, that's just me. I just I don't know if I don't do it on purpose, but I ignore it. I would just ignore them and just pretend like horse blinders because I'm yeah you I can't get angry like if I'm getting too anxious about it that I just ignore it and yeah yeah I do that yeah I do yeah I do that too 
I just ignore it when anything, <laughs> yeah, anything bad goes on. Yeah. Yeah, if, yeah. If anything goes bad at the weddings, I just ignore it. Like at my last wedding, someone got too drunk and started a fight. I just stayed out of it. I didn't want to get involved. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you want to stay neutral. You want to be professional. Yeah. You de- definitely, you definitely want to be professional, but also sometimes you have to get involved because you have to maybe talk to someone, calm them down a little bit. And, you know, maybe sometimes you have to do something or ask for, the staff there at the facility to do something. Donovan, what about you? Do you ignore something like that or when someone's like that, or do you just go, Hey, oh, um, relax. Boy. Um, no, I don't, I don't really, I kind of just watch things as they, they happen. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's not my place to p- play babysitter. I mean, one reason I laughed whenever he was talking about the wedding planner, that wedding I did March 18th, they relieved the mother relieved the wedding planner right before the ceremony and said, go home. We don't need your services anymore. So the wedding planner messaged all the vendors to say, Hey, I'm not involved anymore. Have a good wedding. And, uh, you know, the mother calmed down after, after she got her way of having beads and glow sticks and funny faces coming in for the introductions and just all kinds of stuff that for my area is a little bit, and the glow sticks are pretty common now, but, you know, to hand out beads at the wedding and, you know, we're not in New Orleans. We're in South Central Pennsylvania. Well, are you sure they weren't uh, Jerry really, Springer I, I, beads? <laughs> they, were, well, they weren't Jerry Springer beads, uh, right? There there was none of that at that wedding. Okay. <laughs> now, now we, we've I've probably, done other types of weddings, yes. I, we've had some weddings. Again, I've had a wedding or two that you see things you shouldn't see. And I'm not going to get any glory, glory details, but you see stuff and it's like, mm, yeah, no, that, that, no, 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 no. And, you know, it's like, oh, okay, you know, you, you go on. But yeah, it, it's it, no, no beads. Uh, yeah. Glow sticks. I could see that. I you know the popular thing people come in the floor and they have a drink and they do something with a drink or they toss them to someone else or, yeah, I've seen people do all that kind of fun stuff, but yeah, I can see that kind of being those those, those tchotchkes bringing stuff in for that, and it's like, yeah, it's 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 not your day, and you want I, again, depending on the wedding of the couple, you want you want something classy, you want something you know elegant, or you want something kind of cheesy and you know disruptive, and that's 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 a hard thing, especially you're you're trying to do it, but you said she calmed down, which thank goodness for that. Uh, yeah, I was kind of worried before that wedding. You know, I went to that wedding with some anxiety about doing it, and I just made it an all-out party. Once the dance music started, man, my volume went way up, higher than I've ever had it at a wedding. And, uh, I mean, we had people partying the entire time. They were on that dance floor from the first song until the last. And their ears were bleeding a bit, but it was a party. <laughs> there, there you go. Sometimes you just got to... Uh... Just got to nudge it up a little bit and get it going, and then you know people forget about all the things that happened before. So I'm gonna go to uh, my friend down in Georgia, who is originally from Wisconsin. Who were you, were you drinking a beer there? Were you chugging a beer just before? Or <laughs> beer, just a root beer. <laughs> oh, see, you take out the root, you drink the beer. There you go. That's your secret. Uh, <laughs> um, so what about you? I'm sure Sean, again with your experience with everything, dealing with that person who is. Like, you know, just demanding, asking for stuff, saying, you got to do this, do that. What do you do when you run into someone like that who is not not cooperative or someone who's not uh, not nice to you, you know, someone who's mean, kind of mean? Yeah, I mean, I think I go with just, you know, the classic, kill them with kindness, you know. Just don't settle to their negative energy. Stay positive about it. Um, use, you know, positive reinforcement. Show a little empathy to them. And just really diffuse that situation. Um, but as far as my stories of working, having like big delay, whatever, we had a bride last year have a total meltdown. Thankfully, it wasn't because of us. It was the planner. Um, things weren't the way she liked it when she did her like sneak peek of the venue. And pretty much threw a fit and left the wedding before the ceremony. Um, all the guests were outside. We were at a luxury golf course here in Georgia. So they were sitting out on the fairway, no shade, took the bride two hours to come back before we ever had ceremony. 
Uh, oh, so that wow. one was kind of interesting. Had to had to have a talk with the father because um, obviously we're usually like contracted about five hours down here for a whole event. They ran two hours late, so everything was pushed back two hours. Um, so I had a nice talk with dad about some extra money to uh, keep us there through everything. But uh, yeah, thankfully it wasn't on us. And one other one that stands out, I had a groom this year, and he was great to work with all of that, but he was a micromanager. Uh, for Cox, obviously, you know, we use DJ EP for all of our planning forms, go through our planning meetings with them. So I always go through their songs and stuff before our meeting. And I'm looking at his planning forms and he has cocktail hour, play first, play second, play third, literally cocktail hour, dinner and reception music. Tried telling me what songs to play in which order. Um, so we had a nice long talk during our planning meeting and you know kind of ask them you know, are you paying me to be a jukebox or are you paying me to use my experience to do what we do best um so came to a little bit of a compromise i played his playlist for cocktail hour in order the way he wanted it and from dinner time on i just kind of took over played the music they wanted but kind of did my own arrangement of what they wanted yeah that's that's one of the difficult things a lot of people don't understand um but the bride this past weekend, she had, I, I use Vibo for my planning software. And, you know, I allow people to hey, give me five songs you want to hear during dinner. And I'll take a look at them, see if they fit better, see if they fit good at dinner or do they fit better somewhere else. And she was very adamant, want these songs for dinner. They were like higher BPM, uh, not dancey songs, but a lot more energy. And they were, you know, country, which is nothing wrong with country. But they were like, I, I felt more they would have been better for a cocktail. And I said to her that, and she knows like, I want these for dinner. I just felt that you know, you're having nice, you know, dinner music, and she wanted you know these songs, and you're trying to interlace them. But I had to wait to the last later half of dinner because the first half of dinner, I want something a little bit more. After you you know you get the speeches done, you're gonna everyone's gonna eat dinner. I want that little bit more lull a little bit, just a few minutes for people to kind of catch their breath, have a little instrumental, a little bit of background music, a little bit of thing. You know, I, I run to the bathroom real quick so I get my little break in get five minutes, ten minutes and come back. But it, it's I want that little lull and Tracy's over there, you know, she'll she'll, you know, DJ, you know, and mix music. But the thing is that, you know, that's what I try to do and then build up back up before the special dances and going into the dance floor. But it, it's it's one of the things that sometimes people they they have ideas and sometimes they don't work well. And that's that's the hard part when like your 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 customer with the uh playlist, hey, play this, play that, play this, play that. They don't understand how flow works and how music works and how a song may sound great driving down the street with a bunch of friends screaming in the car versus actually onto a dance floor and it doesn't go the way they think it's gonna go. I have a customer we're gonna meet on Saturday that has some songs kind of like that so we have to find out exactly what their vision is for it so we have a better idea and when we can talk to them and and kind of explain to them how we can structure it better and that's one of the and like you said before kill them with kindness kind of educate them a little bit have them help help them understand that you're there as a professional and you want to do things right to make their event successful be it a wedding be it a birthday party be it a, a barbecue whatever it is you want them to have fun and enjoy it, not worry about all these little things. So, uh, DJ Brentley, what about you? When you uh, run into that uh, meth-filled uh, person there in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin, that, by the way, if you haven't seen already, uh, Code Blue Cam on YouTube has a lot of great La, uh, La Crosse body cam. Uh, La Crosse yeah, uh, police good. have a lot of uh, unique uh, characters up there in uh DJ Brentley's neck of the woods. So if you get a chance to uh, check out Code Blue Cam on YouTube, but uh, yeah, it uh, when you deal with uh, someone, you know, again who's it was difficult or demanding, or he's kind of a royal pain. How do you uh, how do you take care of it? And then tell me a story that you have. To be brutally honest, I'm kind of a prick about it, and I'm. You're paying me what upwards of twenty five hundred and up now, to one keep the sanctity of your day together, which I know a lot of the weddings I get invited to DJ for have several ass clowns in the wedding party. And I have been like, here, one that sticks out, do not take requests from this guy. And they give me a framed picture 
of Nathan, the guy I'm not allowed to take pictures, uh, requests from. This is how most of my things are starting off. And so to nip any of that in the bud during the initial like conversations with a couple before they book me, I let them know straight out if I have some bridesmaid or some groomsmen, even your parents, I'm not changing anything you have put in our planning forms. I will keep that in its entirety. I am not letting Uncle Joe from across the street make a speech. I am not letting somebody cut in on your dances or anything like that unless you tell me. And because one's been so drunk a couple of times and I know they're party animals, I'll be like, I want both of your permission to go off script here. And now when a bride's dad was like, you're going to beep, 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 play white wedding to start off my father-daughter dance. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, and when he goes, I'm paying for it, I'm like, you know what? Then contest the charge. And at that point, I'd already hit record on my phone to get the conversation. So I'm like, this is, you can keep going back and forth with me. I'm just not going to do it out of respect for your daughter. And I'm sure that if this was you and somebody was in your shoes, you would like the same respect. At that point, the dad was like, okay, you're probably right. We shouldn't be playing White Wedding right now. I'm like, now, if you want to play it as a joke later in the night when it's not the spotlight on her and you, I could care less. Just have her tell me it's okay. But changing a major dance or event in the day like that, absolutely not going to happen. Same with like a bridesmaid coming up. Oh, you have to play Carrie before he cheats on the. Oh, no, I'm not. I don't have to. And any of these outlandish requests, I will let couples know I will do everything I am in, in, in my power to make sure they don't go pester you about it. But I'm just not going to do it unless you come and tell me. And it seems to put the kibosh on most of it. And that, that's, you, that's a good thing. With women, especially. Men, men, and, and I will definitely play into women when they come up to this. Hey, if it was your wedding and you'd ask your DJ not to play X, Y, or Z song, would you want to be bothered with it? I have never had a woman say, I'm going to go ask her anyway. Every woman's like, you know what? You're right. Because when I got married, and you'll see a couple of me, she's like, would be like, yeah, I told my wedding DJ no Cupid shuffle and any of that. So, okay, yeah, I'm going to leave you be. And I'm going to leave her alone. And that's the easiest way out of it. And even though I might be a kind of a prick about it, I will give them the be all end all. Here is my out. I can't touch that. And that's, that's the way, that's kind of the way to do it is to explain to them that, do you really want to ruin this person's wedding requesting whatever it is? And really quickly, before we go any further, I got uh, DJ Salsa's Matt coming up next. Um, Got a quick question for you all, and you can raise your I'll let you raise your hands. How many people have had the couple say, "Do not take a request from this person"? And yeah, they they have give you your name, or like Brentley, give a picture or some kind of description. Yeah, so like basically almost yeah. half of us, you know, you know, it, it's like, hey, don't take requests from this person because we know they're going to ask something that's not appropriate or something that's uh, that that we don't want. Well, with more me, more well, lately, yeah, with, with, with a crap yeah. ton well, of with, couples saying, don't take requests at all. Oh, yeah. And I'll say, like, my last, out of my last 15 weddings, at least half of them had said, Here, you know what we want? If it doesn't fit this, tell them to F off, whatever you want, but do not take requests. And then they'll even say, if it was something good that you were thinking of playing, you can even tell them I'm not supposed to be taking requests, but yeah, I'll do that. But I get a lot more of no requests, do what we want weddings. Yeah, and that, that that's that, that that's one way of doing. It. I know uh, Friday uh, requests are pretty much lowered down. She doesn't want a lot of requests, um, and we're we are debating if we're going to put a request sheet out. We usually put a request sheet, and we, of course we filter it. Not everything is requested. Uh, like this past weekend, we had like three or four sheets of requests. And 
yeah, I go through it. Some of the things are, I, I, I look look at, hey, does it fit dinner? Does it fit this crowd? And then some songs like, no, this doesn't fit. Like, you know, certain artists or certain songs are just offensive or they're very polarizing. And we don't want that. We want people to have fun and everyone to enjoy themselves. So, uh, Matt, since you're uh, since you're late and your last one here, uh, <laughs> welcome to the party, pal. Uh, and uh, Thanks, was... hopefully you're enjoying a beautiful be... sunny California. You'll be happy to know I am protected now. I have a partition in the van and some e track go. on the side, so uh, no no truss is going to take my head off. So, there you go. Yeah, we're good. Um, and then I I did give you guys a shout out on J uh, DJ J Book Show too. So, oh, there you go. Thank uh, you. It was it was his highest rated. He, he had more viewers than Cleveland Terry uh, when Cleveland yeah. Terry's on his show. So well, there you go. Maybe I'm just the. I'm I'm a polarizing figure and I'm controversial and people love to tune in. So maybe well, we'll, again, uh, we'll hit up the other. Well, again, you know, you're, you're part of the table here and we, uh, we, we, we love you. And, uh, you know, we all, uh, <laughs> we all sit there and uh, you know, ask you questions because you have a lot of information and you have a lot of value as far as, you know, your knowledge and stuff like that. And we, uh, sometimes we don't agree with everything, but the thing is that everyone's different. Everyone does things differently. So with that, I uh, got a question for you. Uh, this is what mm -hmm. I've been asking the panel. When you run into a difficult person, someone asking, and this goes back to the original statement, uh, I, I had uh, my timeline come up about, and again, this is going back a little bit ago, a photographer that deleted their photos because they weren't fed by the couple. That was the basically the uh, uh, headline. And it basically boils down to it was a friend of the couple, did it for a low price, um, they didn't feed him. They kind of treated him badly. So they, he deleted the pictures, the photographs of the wedding. So when you deal with someone who is demanding, I, again, I don't agree with it, what they did. I, I believe that other ways to take care of that. Um, when you're dealing with someone very demanding, be it brother, sister, mother, father, the, the couple themselves, the bride, the groom, the birthday person, whoever it is thrown to party and they're being very difficult to deal with. How do you overcome that? How do you, you know, you you win that situation? But also tell me your one of your stories about uh running into this and how you uh how you took care of it. Uh well, I've got a perfect example this Saturday. Uh so it was a mixed wedding, uh, you know, Hispanic and white and uh people from all kind of uh general cultures, but uh, you know, the couple wanted what they wanted, and uh, I played Spanish music early, played some freestyle, 80s, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, an hour in, they wanted more like current stuff, easy. So we're doing that, and we're probably, I don't know, it's 12 o'clock, goes to 1. Yeah, it's probably like 12, yeah, probably like 12 o'clock, goes to 1. And uh, this lady, probably early, older lady, comes up and is like, uh, I'm playing like pop punk at this set. And like bride and groom are on the dance floor, all their friends screaming their heads off, having the time of their lives, packed dance floor. And this lady keeps pestering me for Mexican music. And she's like, uh, you play Spanish music, Spanish music. And I was like, yeah, I'll get to it. You know, I, I'm in the middle of this kind of set right now. So give me, you know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I don't know. Comes up like two minutes later. We know what they like. Like they like Spanish music. Like I know these people. And I'm like, I, you know, the bride wanted me to do this, so we have to take it up with her. And finally, like five minutes later, her husband comes over and he's like, hey, man, you need to turn this. And, uh, <laughs> uh language. So, it's a quote. It's a quote. OK, <laughs> um, so uh, so I mean, and he like, you know, I was like, OK, whatever. And so then I did. I, I played like maybe. Uh, a couple songs after that, I played like Spanish music. He didn't get up and dance the entire time. She was, you know, pretty wasted. So she was having fun. But uh, so, I mean, sometimes you just got to like, I, if it was something that wasn't going to work, I would have, you know, stood my ground. But like, I felt like I had played enough to where, okay, we can slip back into Spanish set. And it was great. Everyone still had a blast. And, you know, it was a nice like late night Spanish cumbia set. But I mean, I I deal with difficult people like that. Um, it's pretty rare, though. Like I, most of mine, most of my couples are fine with requests. They just trust me enough to filter them. Um, so like you know, they'll say no line dances. And what I do is I actually print everything out. So like uh, I don't use Vibo because I don't waste money on useless apps. But um, <laughs> I. <laughs> 
Um, so I, I have like a Word document template that I use. And at the end, in big green letters, it says must play. I list all the must plays. If it's like under 15, if it's over that, I just make a separate create or separate playlist for it and just say must play their playlist. Uh, and then for do not play, I list them out. So that way, if somebody comes up and says, oh, uh, can you play Taylor Swift or can you play Bruno Mars? And it says right there on the sheet, no Bruno Mars. They don't think I'm making it up. I literally can hold it and say, look, you know, according to Bride, sorry, uh, none of this. I've never had pushback on that. So that's a, that's a pro tip for you. If you have it written, you know, even if you just make it up, like, uh, you know, it helps. So but, having, I don't know, having, somebody was know, saying, having that do not play list, uh, you know, Again, we don't want to throw our, cu our couples or throw the uh, the guests of honor underneath the bus. But right. you know, explain to the people that you know. Again, this is something that either you know the the couple, the person in charge, the birthday person, whatever whoever the party is or the event is, they don't want X. I, you know, again, explain mm -hmm. that to them. I think I think that's that's a good thing. If, again, if you got it on paper, you want to show them. Hey, look, it says right here. Know this. I, I've done that a few times because people are like, "Yo, come on, come on." And someone come up and asking for certain music, you know, I've run into that too. And it's like, you know, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. And someone come up and using coarse language, uh, like your one person did, I would turn to them and say, Hey, you know, I don't want, I don't appreciate that. And again, I'm doing what the couple wants, the people who hired me, I, I will get to it when I get to it. But this is, you know, again, we're not, we're not puppets on a string. We are trying to make sure that people are enjoying themselves, but also we want everyone to enjoy themselves. And again, you sometimes circling back for a few more, and again, you eventually did that and then uh, had some uh, fun uh, music. But anyone who, uh, you know, has come up to me and being gruff like that, I I'm going to not give pushback, be like, I'll get back to it. Don't worry about it. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Right now, the dance floor is full. It's it's like those people who come up and say, can you play something that I can dance to? And you turn around <laughs> and you look at the dance floor. It's full of like, you know, there's 30, 40 people out there dancing, having fun. You know, people are jumping through the air and whatnot. And you have someone say, can I play something I want to listen to? Well, if you want that, hire me for your event. And then I can play what you want on your playlist. I'm playing what they want. And they're the ones who paid for it. And again, most of the people here obviously are enjoying themselves. So, you know, I'm sorry. I will get back to stuff. And, you know, again, it, it's, it's, it's one of the things, especially with, um, with multiple um, languages or dual languages or anything else. Again, you want to be, you know, you want to cover both. And that's one of the things, yeah. you know, working with a, a couple, like uh, my wedding coming up uh, this Friday, uh, Pakistani wedding. Um she gave me a bunch of songs. I have a bunch. I'm going to go through them. And some requests, something I'm going to try and see if I can get something through one of the sources I have. And, you know, it, I'm, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try, you know, to get those. But I, I can't guarantee anything. The ones I did, the the bride knows. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, again, that's the, that's the fun part. But, you know, someone's there saying, you know, hey, you do this. Okay, you know, again, I'll try to. And someone, you know, kind of be using coarse language or like, let me see. Let me see what I can do. You know, I can't guarantee anything. I've got, I've got an Indian one this weekend and Caribbean dance hall. So that's going to be fun. Uh, I don't really do Indian weddings, but they saw me do. So like Indian weddings, the, there's like a couple subcategories. They're either, they're either like Bollywood uh, or uh, Hindu or Hindi, which Hindi. is the one that I'm doing. Which, yeah, which is the one that they saw me at. And that's how they booked me. Uh, but they sent like 75 songs. And I probably had to download like a good 60 of them because I don't have that music. And um, but yeah, the, the thing to worry about when at these events is like if it's a, a white event and people are speaking English, I could easily look up their request. But uh, I mean, any people a, speak a English, language, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, it's hard. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like I can easily identify a said artist uh, yep. or like so that's that's my thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up food right now. But one one quick thing. Uh, I don't know who, who was mentioning it, but I'm the one DJ that personally likes when they tell me exactly what to play. Not in the order, but if you, I, I hate putting playlists together. That's the thing about DJing I hate more than anything is like having to come up with stuff when all they say is, we like 90s hip hop and 2000s pop. Like that doesn't give me anything. Like give me 40 or 50 or 60, give me 120 songs that you want to hear that night. And make my See, job Matt, ten Matt, times easier. Matt, get a hold of me. I will. I will make you a playlist. Then, <laughs> give give me that. That's that's my playground. That's that's a challenge. Uh, oh, you like uh, you like you like nineties two hip hop. 
Come here. I, I will I will uh, make you a, pl a fun playlist, you know, a good fun I'll let playlist. you handle it. And get this, um, at a school dance, they wanted me to play Jamaican music. I didn't have any Jamaican music. I don't play that kind of music. No, and again, that's something you want to get in advance information. Donovan, what about you? Uh, if, if someone said, hey, uh, play, you know, like 90s hip hop and 2000s, you know, uh, pop rock, or give you a playlist, which do you prefer? Um, I, most of my weddings give me lists and lists of music from, you know, the ceremony music, the cocktail music, the dinner music, and the dancing music. Uh, most okay. of my weddings, I suggest they make a Spotify playlist and share it with me. And then I can, I can play them in the order that I feel is best for the energy of the room. Okay. But I, I do take a lot of requests. I'm, I'm a request DJ and, uh, you know, most of my weddings, I have, you know, all those, uh, you know, I have enough music for the cocktail hour and enough songs they pick for the dinner music. Um, and I actually prefer prefer that. See, I, I like I like doing everything. You know, I, I like watching because I put a lot of those little samples out and see what the reaction is on people. So uh, Buddy Jeff likes Buddy. Buddy likes working too much. He likes he likes doing his job too much. The rest of I, us are I all like just... being a DJ. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I like I like mixing. I like but I like playing new stuff. That, like that's the thing i like getting some info about what they like but like that's the thing when they say we like this music from a specific era there's nothing new to really try when they say we like house music or we like dubstep or we like tech house or we like big room or hard style there's so many new songs constantly coming out and so much undiscovered stuff that's what i love doing but i don't know i like to also play like tech house remixes of like 70s 80s stuff so that that's that's what I like. But when you say music from like a certain era, like it just gets boring. Like I'm, I'm sick of playing tipsy, uh, by Jake Kwan over and over again. And you know, well, now, now you got the one, you get the one from uh, Shibuzi out there, you know, yeah, which no. I've been rolling, I've been rolling that into tipsy. Oh, so, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it's right now that's, that, that's the hot thing. And that, you know, the other one is, you know, I had some help, you know, with uh, yeah. Morgan Wallen and, uh, Post Malone. So, you have some you have some stuff there that's popular. And again, I always try and look for what's popular. It's going to make my dance floor work. And I could tell you the past two weddings doing the post Malone uh, Morgan Wallen song, I help I had help, um has it's kept huge. the dance floor packed. It's huge. Yep. So that's 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 a tip right there. Jeff, what do you do? You either prefer someone to give you a list or give you some genres? Um, I'll, I'll do both. I mean, I enjoy looking for music uh, that, you know, if, if they give me a general direction and say, you come up with a with a list, I, you know, sure, you're using my expertise and my, my, um, you know, years of knowledge of playing music to, you know, to fill in that void. And if they're open for that, you know, sure, I, I enjoy that. But if they give me, uh, hey, here are the songs we want to hear, and I've had a few weddings like that. That's fine too. It, it's like, like, uh, like Matt said, it's just you know, give me a list, and I will play it in the order that uh, that I feel best, and it, and that's fine too. But um, you know, for me, I don't I don't mind looking for those nuggets that you know sometimes people don't always hear you know, in a certain genre and playing it and see what kind of reaction I get. You know, it's one that like, oh yeah, I haven't heard that. You know, I love that song. Or so I forgot about that's it. the reaction that I, I always enjoy getting. And that's from me filling in that void that the, the client gave me. So, Jordan and Taylor, what do you guys usually like to have a playlist or would you rather have uh, genres of play? I'd rather them just tell me genres and I make the playlist. That's my favorite part. Picking okay. out songs, figuring out what, what we're, you know, going to play. And that's, I don't know. I listen to everything. Uh, so I love a, a little bit of everything. So I always have a pretty good sense. Of see, gonna... see, but but try, try doing that when you have like three or four weddings every weekend. And then like. It gets I mean, annoying and, and taxing yeah. when they all say, like, we don't have any songs. We don't have any playlists. We trust you. I'm like, no, give me some stuff. Give me some specific. I have, like, like three or four folders you get that I really yeah. are my go-to folders. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, I I mean, we make playlists for the couples. Um, but I always end up in my – I have a 
folder called Make the White People Dance. I have a, I have a folder called Wedding Dance. I have a folder called Wedding EDM Dance. And like, I yeah, usually just, end up in those. Yeah. I, um, yeah. But I do like making playlists. I do. Yeah, I love I, music. I, don't really, yeah. Yeah, I just, we like music a lot. That's what we, we, I listen to music all day long. Like, I don't really but feel I, like I need to get, be that. I mean, I have my important songs in, in order and ready to go. But even for later in the night dancing, like, I'm not too worried. We do make it for this, though. But, I'm, um, I'm just going to play what, I, I'm what comes to me. I'm not opposed to them giving me 50 songs, either. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty... I'm on with Jeff yeah. here. This um, is one of those things that Midwest DJs Live and Mex brought up in some of the seminars. I'd rather if you're hear... getting to the point when you need to be like, hey, give me 50 songs, you haven't done your due diligence with your couple. By this the time... Is, I don't I'm like to... I don't... I don't I don't like to talk to my couples. Like I, I like one or two emails and that's it. I don't want to set up Bill meetings. Murphy. I don't want it to have endless texts. You wouldn't like my approach. Yeah. But here. Yeah, wow, we're it's same here. something to be said about the crafting your client's experience. And things mm -hmm. that I, I want to know because like here, mm -hmm. there are songs that you're not gonna think to pull out until you have conversations with couples. Yeah. Like I want to. When did you graduate high school? When did you graduate college? Yep. Okay. What kind of shows? What what music festivals have you gone to? What music festivals would you avoid, like the play? So I, I can get a real good feel. Like I know what you were cruising to, you know, listening to on the radio in high school when you got your driver's license. I know what song you were probably, you know, listening to as you're doing stair diving in your college frat. So I can kind of pinpoint these ideas and be pretty well prepared with that and whatever they give me and a lot of couples will be like do your thing okay i know exactly what you're thinking but i want to just you know hone in on a few of your favorites and then you know with that i'll be like okay when they tell me their concerts and fests i'm like you went to Lollapalooza x year these were the bands that played on it. okay i know who to throw in now so i can get a really well tailored music list based on what they've told me what their actual interests are. And then the last piece of that puzzle is kind of, you know, during dinner hour, paying attention to who's hopping and bopping to what, but listen more. I'm listening to toasts because if that's your crew of party animals up there, I, I can't tell you every wedding I've been to remember that concert, you know, the some 41 concert where you got alcohol poisoning it, but we stayed anyway and things like that. <laughs> you're going to find these little, <laughs> So now, not only do you know they went to Warp Tour in like 2003 to see some 41, that opens up. You guys are into, I can play Chemical Romance. I can play Fallout and all this other stuff. And now I look like a musical genius just because I really paid attention to our conversations and your speeches. And Bill Herman is so spot on about this mm -hmm. that in order to really dig into your couples, you should, one, by the time I've gotten to this conversation point, I'm using this in my sales approach. So I can go, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just said country boom, country fest, rock fest, and some death metal bands. I am not the DJ for you. But I know who is. So I can get to that point. Or then they're going to be like, oh, yeah, we like fought like we saw Warp Tour the year the, you know, the transplants headlined on one of the stages. Okay, cool. I know exactly what era that is. And then she'll say something like, but don't forget, I'm really into Bruno and something else. I've got your entire scope and everything I can, you know, play off of that will make you look good if you follow, you know, the right format with that. And, and that's, that's, that's why I, and that, that, that's an important thing, learning. asking questions. Here, but, uh, one thing I would I'm have so to helpful. say, um, when they do not give you information, um, and I usually try to start with the, then what don't you want to hear? Mm -hmm. What do you hate? Mm -hmm. Yep, That's where That's I go with that. Cause I then ask. you're going to, you're going to learn so much about them. Like you're saying right there, like, Oh, I hate Taylor Swift. And then you're like, okay, so you hate Beyonce too. And they're like, yes. And then <laughs> see, but the, the problem with your approach, Brentley though, is like, I get it, but like I do a lot of EDM weddings and they'll say, Oh, we're fans of artists like Alinium, Kygo, Griffin, so-and-so. 
but each of those artists have like a wide range and do, are you fans of the like mainstream songs or do you want like the specific ones and so that's why yeah. i like to get more detailed playlists current, so i can like know. Do you want the current res album that sounds like skinny puppy or do you want something that's more dubstep i totally get where you're coming from and that's right. really when also again part of what i delve into with the couples that want to invite me to be their dj i don't want to take I don't want to walk into a wedding where we've kind of talked about it and then I get side, you know, get, right, you know kind right. of side I, you know, across the face. Like, we, oh, in addition to everything we told you, can you play like half country? No, I don't <laughs> want to get to that point. Okay. So, yeah, and then, then, so then I'll be like, you want pop music, dubstep, and country. How does that work? Ah, I mean, the mystery of a wedding, Bear Brantley. It's always a fun stuff. That's where we're wedding it's not, DJs. How does it work if it's like, how did you guys come up with this idea? Okay, fine. But, but you run into it. One minute you're playing a rock song, next point. pop song, next minute a country. It, 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 it sometimes happens that's that way. That's what makes you a good DJ if you can make it happen. I love it when people ask me to do difficult things. Like I'm like, I'm more determined than ever difficult. to make it happen. <laughs> but yes. I, like, my, like, yeah. even, I yeah. want that experience so that I give them to be something that they're not going to get again. And I, I, so having as much knowledge about them is I can dip into before I get there or finding out that we're the wrong to like, I'm the wrong entertainer. Wrong DJ. That's the other thing. Yep, that's I'm, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Sean real quickly. I know, uh, I, I know uh, you got to say something real quickly, uh, Jordan, but I want to go to Sean. He's been, he's been listening or waiting for a minute. I, got, I see you've got some on his mind. You want to go ahead and uh, give your two cents on this? <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think Bratley knocked it out with that. Um, I'm really big on the pre-meetings and even pre-consultation. Like, I want to know when they graduated high school, their ages, what they're into. As far as playlists, I tell them to keep it under 25 if possible. Give me 25 of your favorite absolute must-have songs. I want to build the rest of it from there. And I want to build a lot of it on the spot to see what the dance floor is reacting to. Because sometimes brides and grooms have horrible taste in music, and your dance floor, they give you a 50 song playlist of crap yeah. music. It, I, it sucks. I did, I did get the Grateful Dead Fish Wedding with some Mumford and Sons and Dawes thrown in. And I, I'm like, oh, we're here. And I'm like, and then I realized, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. None of you are going to dance. You're going to go outside and blaze up the entire time, come in, say hi, and then go back out and blaze up. Okay. We are good. I know what you're doing. I think the yeah. Volkswagen buses. With you. I think the Volkswagen buses in the uh, parking lot would gave that away a long before you walked into the place. You know, because they probably camped <laughs> out like it was a dead concert. So, with that said, we got to wrap it up. We're over in overtime here. I got to thank our guest Donovan, all the way from the great state of Pennsylvania, there in Virginia in his truck. Uh, putting up with us and having fun. Hopefully, you had a lot of fun with us. Thanks tonight. for having me. Oh no, you! I, I I'd love to have you back on here again, definitely, Donovan. And I want to thank you all for watching the show. And tonight, I'm going to actually have Sean take us out tonight because uh, he's newer to the uh, round table. But uh, Sean, take us away, my brother. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the DJ round table. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. See you guys later. Good night.